Men and women serving around the world, here's Merry Go Round. 60 minutes of music and fun for boys and girls in khaki and two shades of blue. Week by week, the Merry Go Round goes around the services, and this is once again Army Week. <laughs> We welcome you to Studio Stand Easy, where cheerful Charlie and the happy gang of other cranks from Stars in Battle Dress are filming fun for all. Studio Stand Easy, where the only thing out of bounds is the blues. And with the band of the Welsh Guards under their conductor, Captain T.S. Chandler, we'll say... <laughs> Boys who enjoys all the noise of attacking. A military giant shoot. The clock ain't to me. Do your duty. Take it away. Ladies and gents, will you join? I heard a part of we want to know that you feel. So gay and hearty get hep. What good will you do if you sit there singing the blues? Ladies and gents, we can say we're glad to know you. If there's a song or a smile that we can show you get set, I want that you to play it. The cocky, shoot it to me. Bop, boop, shoot, shoot, shoot. I know I'll be packing, packing. One of the boys who enjoy all the noise of attacking, a military giant. The cocky to me. Do your duty. Take it away. Uh, pardon me, sir. I want to see uh, the scripts of the department, please. Uh, oh, scripts? I want to see the boss. Oh, well, you must be Mr. Luigi. Well, if you go through that door, you'll find him right over there. Thank you too much. Yes, sir. Very nice. Uh, pardon me, please, but um, uh, could you please tell me, is this a stand -a -measy? Studio stand -a -measy, that's a what it is, and nobody but. Excuse me, please. What's your name? No, no. That's a what i got to say. What's a your name? No, no, sir. I'm looking for the scripts department, please. Well, you're looking for me no more. This is a script department. You find me. What's the matter? Well, Luigi, listen to me. I've got a one, a, one a script. For the film, what's about to begin? That's a swell. What's the story? It's about a dime, and what's the name is a Cleopatra puss. <laughs> Creeper, who's his puss? No, 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 no. No, Cleopatra puss. Okay, who cares what kind of puss? Now, listen, this is a dime. <laughs> this is a dime, and she's got a boyfriend, and what's the name is a Mark Antominus. What's she's a business? I don't want to know what she's a business. Maybe he don't got a job. Well, you want to find him a job, but that's what she's supposed to do. What's the matter? Would you please listen to me? This guy is a fictitious. He's a what? He's a fictitious. <laughs> well, get the doctor to him. What's the matter with you? No, fictitious, a fictitious. He ain't a really a person at all. Well, what's this a time of wasting her time for? Don't be silly. <laughs> she ain't a wasting her time. She's a good girl. Now, this is Cleopatra Puss, you see. She's got a one swell apartment. And this a guy, Antominus, he's a head over heels in love with her. Is he what? Head over heels. We got acrobats. Luigi, you acrobats in the belfry. <laughs> you nuts. Now listen, one night, when all's the dark, he steals the upper to a boudoir. Upper to a witch? Up to a boudoir. <laughs> Tell me, what's, so what's a boudoir? Boudoir care. Now this, um... <laughs> what do you say? I must say. <laughs> and now this a guy, Mark Antominus, he's a been to a saloon a bar. And he's in a one, a fine estate, uh, Things will look a pretty bad for Cleopatra Puss. What's the matter? She don't call the cops. The rain are no cops. This is a fictitious. Then what's it a fictitious business? I won't understand it. Now listen to Luigi. I'm going to tell you once. I'm going to tell you no more. That a fictitious is a man that the nobodies are really there. He ain't a there. She ain't a there. There are both a nobodies. Tony, what's the matter now? Will you please come back when you've got a summer bodies? I'll do it.
This is your studio crime reporter reading the indictment of Professor K. Morris, who took a popular song to the piano and murdered it. Who said that crime does not play? Professor, kill it! As your genial host, may I offer a toast to the wine-buying guest on my right. Hooray! May his bank account grow, heavy laden with dough. May he spend it in here every night. Say, Charlie, huh? can that guy swing a Japanese sandman? Nah, too late. He committed Harry Parry. Oh. <laughs> See this night in its glory. You people so loyal and true. Put me in mind of a story. I'll tell that story to you. I say, Joe, Joe, oh, what, are you oh, oh. What, what are you doing, Joe? I'm a tap dancer. Can you, uh, can you tap on toe, Joe? Sure. I'll bring him in. The waiter around the porter, the waiter around the porter. Don't forget the upstairs, mate. Shoot the waiter. Ah, to me. I want some fish. Can I fly in now, sir? What? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. He wants some fish. Don't mind if I cue, handler. Fish. Stop. Hey, I look. I told you to hear a pin drop. So you did. People in the ballroom were stopping and hurry So I began to get just a little afraid I sneak into the kitchen and dug me a party The waiter, the porter, the sack of story made I sneak into the kitchen to see what was hatching In time he, the hostess, suggested some bread But I was in the kitchen, laughing, scratching The waiter, the porter, the upstairs made da 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 who? Me? You. If ever I'm party, the sound party down there. I had a gun about ten, a Harlequin egg. You found me in the kitchen, applauding the bodies, the waiter, the porter, the upstairs. Why, me, Paul? Coming up. The waiter, the porter, the upstairs, man. <laughs> Say, Ken, will you get the boys to run that jungle regiment playback? of the tapes. In the heart of the dreaded swamp-ridden jungle, which is situated on the borders of Japonica, live the primitive inhabitants of the 54th Light Akak Regiment, living, living the medieval life, which means survival of the fittest. They toil from sunrise to sunset, having very little and not much of it. They share and share alike. A predominant figure amid this panorama of cocky color is one known as Typhus the Terrible, who, together with the vicar of vaccine, wanders among the natives, bringing them cheer and looking for flesh in which to plunge their hypodermic stirrup pumps. For all their simplicity, they are spotlessly clean, and at this very moment, one of the natives, Gunnar Ambopa by name, is sweeping up the remains of a corporal who was chewed up at breakfast. <laughs> this placid pastime is broken by a familiar sound. Ambopa is disturbed, and no wonder, for it is the dreaded voice of Tarzan, the tape man. Ah, 
night for P.T. <laughs> Will on both of the natives surrender to this call? <laughs> ah, on parade! <laughs> but no, he prepares to defy. He braces his leg. <laughs> and straightens his back. And sends back a call of defiance. Ah, shut up. At this, Tarzan is infuriated. He makes his way to the hut, but the hut is shut. Shut, shut. Inside, the native barricades the door. For it means war, for sure. Good Lord. Will he withstand the battering ram? Will he triumph over Tarzan, the tape man? Once again, the cry is heard. Ah, outside, I said. Ah, go away, you big ape. With the door steadily giving way, Ombofa goes to the window. He can see fatigue men cutting firewood for the CO's office. Ember! No time to lose. He really is in trouble. The banging on his door is becoming more alarming, incessant, merciless. Catastrophe. Tarzan breaks through, and here he is. He speaks to Umboper in the native tongue. Get outside! Dejected, Umboper is taken to the jungle clearing where he will be charged. Charge! Will Umboper succeed in escaping from the charge against him? Listen next time. What will Tarzan the tape man do? And with the sun sinking low in a jungle setting, we reluctantly say farewell to Japonica and to Tarzan of the tapes. And this is where the band of the Welsh Guards takes the air again with a number that was written by Glenn Miller's pianist, Mel Powell, and given to the band. Here it is then with Sergeant Alan Bristow at the piano, Pearls on Velvet.
Hey, who are you? Who, me? I'm Cheerful Charlie, the comic. Well, make me laugh. Uh, make you laugh. Let's see. Uh, they're speeding up the demobbing. <laughs> that's... Oh. Yes, that's very, very funny. Will you say that again, only louder? I say you're very, very funny. Thanks, there might be a critic listening. Well, <laughs> well don't worry, you won't make news. No, but Charlie McCarthy did, and look what happened. Well, what happened to him? Had a terrible car accident. But Charlie McCarthy, Bergen's doll, was he damaged? Damaged, broke his leg, lost three pints of plastic wood. Mm. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I can tell you something about that doll. He's being remolded. Yeah? Yeah, they've taken away his left hand, but his right hand's left. What do you say? I said, they've taken away his left hand, but his right hand's left. No, no, that's not right. Well, of course it's right. Now, suppose you take away your left hand. Right. Now, you can write with the hand that's left. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm left-handed. <laughs> okay, then take away your hand that's left. Right? I still want to write. So what? Your right hand's left, which you're going to take away. Right. Now, you've got the right arm left. In other words, the left arm's left all right. Isn't that right? Sure, that's left all right. Right. <laughs> now, with the left hand that's left, you can write. I can't. Why not? Left me pen somewhere. <laughs> Oh, Ken, Joe, come over here, man. Listen, Joe, I'm going to make you my legal advisor. You're going to what? I'm make you my legal advisor. He looks too ill. That makes me illegal. What's illegal? What's illegal? It's a little bird about that big. Ever seen it? Of course I've seen it. Ever had a bird? Listen, I've had the bird many a time. What am I saying? <laughs> What's cooking? Here is our regular cooking recipe for housewives. By the eminent Indian cook, Thin Jit. If you take cranberries and stew them like applesauce, it tastes much more like prunes and rhubarb does. How do I do it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Arthur Haynes. And Joe Giggs. Tonight we present Joe Giggs. And Arthur Haynes in a little sketch written by Arthur Haynes. Devised by Joe Giggs. And Arthur Haynes. <laughs> Please note that... Joe Giggs is appearing by kind permission of... Arthur Haynes. And Arthur Haynes is appearing by kind permission of... Joe Giggs. Characters in order of their appearance are big men. Arthur Haynes, little boy. Joe Giggs. Note that Joe Giggs' shoes lent by... Arthur Haynes and Arthur Haynes' wig lent by... Joe Giggs. This is, this is the, the Charlie, Charlie Chester, Chester program. program. Well, thanks for the build-up, boys. Thanks a lot. And by the way, the police are outside looking for you two. For us? For us? This is Charlie Hearthrug. For Brimston. Good, Good night. night. <laughs> well, there they go. They've gone down the hall. They've gone down the street. They've gone wild. They've gone crazy. They've gone in the roadway. <laughs> gone with the windscreen. Oh, well, we can manage without them. <laughs> Did you hear the story about... Ken, don't... Uh, Ken, don't scrape that shovel like that. Did you hear the story, folks, about... Ken, leave that bucket alone. What have we got in that bucket? Arthur Haynes and Joe Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. By kind permission of the borough council. I know, speaking of councils, folks, isn't it nice to go home? I'm fond of my house. It looks so nice inside papered the walls with utility lino. <laughs> of course, the beauty of it all is that, being happily married, there are no fights in my house... We go out in the yard. <laughs> I remember the day I said to her father, I said, I want to marry your daughter. He said, can you keep her? I said, why? Is she going bad? <laughs> Do you know my wife? My wife has got an appetite like a canary. She eats a peck at a time. <laughs> and fat. She's so fat, I took her into a restaurant one day. She bent down to do her shoelace up. They flung a tablecloth over her and laid tea. <laughs> strangely enough, strangely enough, I liked her mother. She's not with us anymore, poor soul. <laughs> she, had... she had very large ears. She looked, she looked like a cab with the doors open. <laughs> Her ears were so large, she stooped on a windy day, glided five miles and got shot down as a flying bomb. <laughs> Mind you, I've roughed it myself. I was once on manoeuvres, I was in a field on a windy day, an old lady came up to me and said, Young man, I think you're very, very brave to come down in a parachute with this hundred mile an hour gale blowing. I said, lady, I didn't come down with a parachute, I went up with a tent. <laughs> but I certainly get around. When I was in Germany, I picked up a letter from a German soldier to his mother. He said, dear mother, thank you for the boots you sent. They tasted fine. <laughs> Did you hear about the cockney who joined the uh, horse guards? <laughs> they gave him a very, very frisky horse. He managed to get on the horse all right. But there, the horse jumped, kept jumping about all over the place. And presently, one of the horse's back legs got caught in the stirrup. Little fellow looked down and said, Blimey, if you're getting up here, I'm coming down. <laughs> Thank you very much. I remember one time I was in Spain. I get around. I went into a cafe in Spain. I couldn't talk the language. So I tried to make do by drawing. I got out my pencil and paper. I wanted a steak and mushrooms. So I, I drew a cow and some mushrooms. And the waiter said, Si, si, senor. I thought he understood. 
He came back with an umbrella and two tickets for the bullfight. <laughs> but uh, Moscow was the place. Moscow is. I took the boys with me to Moscow, and while we were there, we learned a beautiful aria. It's, uh, it's a little theme that comes from Tchaikovsky's refrain from smoking. <laughs> it's called Chatsby's on the Gorby Time with the Gravids on the Hoke and with the Bibli Chats and Skites, which went interpreted means when your hair has turned to silver, I hope you've got a change of a pound. Are you ready, boys? <laughs> Olga, my Olga, I love skin gear with you. Olga, my Olga, say I'm the one for you in Russia. Olga, my Olga, my poor heart's in a well. It's, it's a broad black moon like night and night. Don't be so vulgar. Olga, Olga, my Olga, I'm in love and now I'm falling. If you will marry me, a Russian soldier, I promise I'm a man for you. It's love ski, by the stars that shine above ski. I ski, what you ski, to be my turtle dog in Moscow. Dancing and drinking, with a mouth that tastes like cheese. Ten to ten, that's possible to drink. How'd you like an eggs done? Time to eat market, like a market. Underneath the counter market. Just say that you will share with me what you got. For Olga, that will be your lot. Olga. My Olga, we've got to name the day. Olga, my Olga, in the good old Russian way. We'll make our home there by the heaven's burning gate. Cause we'll never get a house in a thousand years. You've got to fill a form in. Red tape. Olga, my Olga, I'm in love and now I told ya. If you do not marry me, I'll string you up to the old oak tree. Hi! This was Army Week, and next time the show will be in navy blue. Week by week, the merry-go-round goes round the services, bringing music and fun to men and women serving round the world, to boys and girls in khaki and two shades of blue. This week, the folks in khaki were Louise Gainsborough, Arthur Haynes, Raymond Sinclair, Joe Giggs, Kenny Morris, and Charlie Chester by permission of the commanding officer of the Central Pool of Artists, and the music was by the dance orchestra of the Welsh Guards under their conductor, Captain T.S. Chandra. The script was by Charlie Chester and the programme produced by Leslie Bridgemont. <laughs>